Good morning, everyone. We'll give everyone just a couple of minutes to get signed on. All right, welcome. Why don't we get started? How is everyone doing today? Hopefully you're all doing well. Um, we'll just do a couple of housekeeping items in the beginning. For sound check purposes, please click and raise the, right hand, raise the hand button at the bottom of your screen if you can hear me okay. Excellent. It looks like our sound is working just fine. Um, by way of introduction, my name is Kate Kenny, and I'm one of the partners here with ProNexus. Um, before we begin, um, dur during the you'll be muted for the duration of the presentation. So if you have questions, please use the Q and A feature at the bottom of the screen. We'll answer those questions at the end of the session, and a recorded version will, of the webinar will be sent to all participants. For those of you on the call who are not familiar with our firm, um, our entire leadership team are either CFOs and former controllers and CPAs. Uh, we operate very much like an accounting firm. However, we don't do audits and tax returns. So we do all the consulting work that accounting firms do, but sometimes can't due to independence reasons. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to visit our website. Um, on the home page on the upper right hand corner is a link to our case studies, which really gives you a good idea as to how we help our clients. Starting through the agenda, um, really we're going to talk about how do you make your business nimble and flexible. Um, and we're also going to talk about the advantages, how to work with marketing, client engagement, um, administrative services, how to comp your staff, um, and then really looking at you know, some ways and tools available that can help you be more efficient and effective. So one of my favorite quotes that I've read during this um, pandemic is, an organization's ability to learn and translate that learning into action rapidly is the ultimate competitive advantage. And as many of you guys probably feel that when this all happened, you were like, what do I do? How do I stay relevant? How do I stay alive? And how do I anticipate the absolute worst? Um, and I think for me, that's really what this this saying or this quote says is, how do I do that? How do I react so that my business can be successful throughout this, or at least, you know, maintain some sense of revenue and profitability? So there's many advantages to being nimble and flexible. The first thing is um, you can respond to a change in climate. So COVID's a great example. Recessions are a good example. You can try to capitalize on the upswings as well as the downswings if you keep your information or your organization nimble enough, right? Where you can make changes quickly and execute. Um, you can react quicker. Um, and then you also will find, and one of the things even that we found is our ability to be creative, to work around obstacles and create ways of helping our clients. Um, and that has really, where I think is going to be what's helpful with companies during this time. And then the other thing is, is how do you reduce your non-essential costs and overhead, right? So if you're set up appropriately to begin with, it's pretty easy to do this quickly. And that's one of the things that um, I really want to talk to you about and share. And one of the things that I'm passionate and we're passionate about here at ProNexus. 
So marketing, right? So we, we always had the discussion here. Uh, where's the ROI? I always think I'm an accountant, right? So for me, I always want to know where the ROI is, what, if what we're doing is effective. Um, and how do we how are we able to trace that and show the analytics? So the first thing is, um, is how do you reduce your marketing costs so that you can only do things as ROI or that we know will generate revenue? So we've attended millions of networking events in the past, we sponsor events. Um, we do so because we wanna give back to Rochester, but we also, um, we wanna be able to, um, we hope that we get some sort of you know, networking uh, out of it. Well, when it came to this, we said, okay, you know what? We need to cancel everything that we can't generate a clear ROI for. Um, and then what can we do where we can talk to as many people as possible um, and, and hopefully you know, use that Acts, uh, use it as a networking platform. So for us, it was really like, how do we present and produce webinars so that we can talk to people and have conversations um, through virtual interactions? And then we can have attendance follow up and really um, make sure that our clients have everything that they need. So for us, it was really very simple. Um, initially, we, we reduced all of our expenses towards, towards events and activities that didn't have a clear ROI. And then um, what we did was also try to increase our virtual interaction through people, especially because we couldn't see them in person. So client service. I mean, I'm sure many of you guys uh, have really had to up your client service. You know, one of the things that I always say is how do we... Right now, um, if we don't have exceptional client service, then we're failing. Um, and the reason being is because, because everything is so virtual and because there's this level of trust between your clients, you really need to make sure that your client service and communication is excellent. Um, one of the things that we did and that, you know, that we've been doing is really helping to deepen client relationships. And what we find is by just having personal conversations and more intimate, everyone's going through the same thing. Um, there's, you know, not necessarily selling to clients, but also just talking about what's going on and developing those relationships. We are now, we've always wanted to use video conferencing. Um, and we always talked about it, but we just never had the push to do it. And now we are actually using Zoom to, or Teams, or you can use WebEx or whatever to do every meeting. And what that does is it allows you to really build a relationship. And there were so many, we service clients all over the country. And before we might have a conference call to do that, but now you really can actually, we have the ability and, and it's very normal to do a video conference call with every meeting. So from that, I always try to look for the silver linings out of everything. That would be something. Um, in addition to that, because they're virtual, you're reducing your travel costs, you're creating efficiencies through better time management. I mean, everyone knows that your greatest asset is time and you know, I myself come in and my calendar is pretty booked from the time I get in to the time I leave. So the more efficient I can be, the more I can get done. Um, so um, working moms really always have to be very efficient. And then the other thing is, is really becoming an expert in what your clients need to know and what they need to know right now, right? So if you have something out in the future that's two years out and you want to become an expert in it, it's not really valuable because right now people are really just trying to stay alive and trying to do whatever they can. Um, so really understanding that. One of the things is like, example, understanding PPP and what the, what the legislations are changing. Understanding, you know, we've had a vendor of ours really understand um, you know, any of the new HR laws and sharing that information and any way that you can get information quickly and digest it quickly um, through a trusted advisor. So that's really important. And then the other thing is, is make yourself self available for all questions, big or small. So, you know, my clients know and they can email me, call me anytime and, and I'm going to be available to them. And the reason being is because the more value I can provide to them um, and, you know, they'll share information with me too. Um, webinars, newsletters, there's lots of ways to be in touch with your client during this time. It doesn't have to stop. Staff compensation. So this has always been a hot topic of discussion here at ProNexus. Um, and, and one of the things, and, uh, and actually I'll, I'm going to credit our, our um, president, Rafael Vidal, with this, is really having a, a model where there's a base plus a bonus. And those bonuses are achieved on company objectives. So 
um, the objective should be based on some sort of metric that either drives revenue or creates efficiency across the organizations. Uh, or maybe it's, you know, maybe it's collections, right? Bringing in cash and, and staying on top of that. Maybe it's um, creating leads, you know, for marketing. You know, for us, it's really got to be for our marketing organization. They have to create leads that our salespeople can follow up on, right? So really tying those objectives. And if they accomplish those goals and they've received that bonus part of their compensation, um, and then everybody feels like they're involved in the greater cause and helping the company to achieve profitability. So this is something that, um, and we always had a bonus in place uh, with our company, but this is something that um, we really made it, we kind of tightened those up just a little bit and made sure, and I think what we found is that our staff, instead of being stressed about that, they were happy because they felt challenged and they felt like the work that they do would really help drive a bigger result. So outsourced administrative services, and I don't know if outsource is always the right word, but I might call it flexible administrative services. Um, so one, we, about two years ago, we switched to a cloud-based solution from an IT, an outsource solution for HR. We actually rec recently insourced our accounting, um, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how this can really help you and some of these services can really help you, outsource services can help you achieve your goals and be flexible because you only have to buy what you need. So IT, and you're actually, we have some follow-on webinars coming up, and, and I'm going to tell you, um, there's one in September that's going to have two of our vendors um, that helped us throughout this process. And I think it'll be important for you to know that the options are out there if you can attend. Um, outsourced IT. So I'll give you an example. Two years ago, we moved into a new office. And as many of you guys know, maybe the history of our company, we were a startup. We were founded in 2012. And... Um, we were founded and we have a partnership and an alliance with the Bonadio Group. Um, and when we got started, which was wonderful, is that Bonadio really helped us to get our company started and allowed us to focus on what really mattered, which was servicing clients and getting clients with initially. So our Bonadio was our outsourced IT provider. Um, and as you can imagine, our um, eventually our business as we grew, I mean, we now have 80 plus employees, um, we needed, we had very demanding services. So um, I might need five laptops tomorrow for a client project because the client has an urgent need. Um, but a deal just wasn't set up to do that because, um, you know, they, they have a different model. So we really thought about when we moved into office space um, outside of it is how do we, how do we partner with a company that will help us with our IT. So initially we thought of this as how do we get what we need and we can work remotely and we have a very flexible solution because we're gonna need consultants, we're gonna need to have PCs ready, we're gonna need to have them ready quickly. Um, and we partnered with Entree who will be a guest actually on um, an upcoming webinar. Um, and the reason why we partnered with them is that we had a very cutting edge idea when it came to IT. And the cutting edge idea was through the IT director at Bonadio where we did everything in the cloud. So we don't have any servers in our office whatsoever. Um, we have a cloud-based shared drive. We have a cloud-based operating software. We have a cloud-based accounting software. We have Office 365. We have, um, we have, I'm trying to think of what else. We have a, you know, fiber, fiber optics. So we have everything we have is, is outsourced. Nothing actually sits in-house in our office. Um, we use Azure for our shared drive. Um, and we did this on purpose for our consultants to really, we wanted to build this infrastructure. But what we didn't realize was that really set us up for this change in climate right now, right? So when people had to work from home, um, they immediately were able to, and we were immediately able to provide PCs where consultants were out at our clients that maybe our clients couldn't do it. We were able to do that for them very quickly and turn this on very, very quickly. So. But one of the things that we didn't realize on top of it was how do we look at our costs and our software and can we reduce those costs? And because where everything is cloud-based, it's very easy to negotiate with vendors where you can scale down or scale up very quickly. Um, for example, with um, we, we had, when we first started, we're like, we need 24 by seven for support. Everyone works, we're all working. And then we, during this, we said, you know, we're paying for 24 by seven support, does everybody, does anyone use it? 
And we asked around and guess what? I think there maybe was one call after five to our IT support. So we were able to reduce our IT costs and I think it was by like 25%, um, our support costs through um, just, just taking our support. And what we didn't realize is we probably didn't need it because we always have PCs that are ready to deploy. So if someone's PC isn't working and you're able to log into everything in the cloud, all you have to do is really log on to that new PC and it completely knows who you are and takes you right back to where you can be. So that was a great way that we realized part of it. The other thing is, is also through some of our software. So we were paying for um, a software to get client names and addresses and phone numbers. And for three users, I think it was something like $5,000. Well, we bought it a couple years ago and um, Caitlin Elfin, who you see her picture here in marketing was like, I think there's other options out there for cheaper. We were able to reduce our costs down to $1,200. So there's lots of great ways to be flexible and to be nimble and to reduce your costs. And really you just have to get creative, think about what you need, think about the services that you have and realize, and lots of times what you'll find is you're paying for things that you probably don't really need. And, um, and, and you know, and, and this is like an opportunity to really clean things up for you and for, for greater profitability even beyond. So outsourced HR services. So here's another really, you know, lesson learned um, as well. So kind of like Bonadio helped us with our IT. Um, they also helped us with our HR. Well, guess what? We became, a, you know, I, I probably, I would say an, an annoyance to them because um, we had people that needed to start right away and they needed to be onboarded right away and it just didn't work with their model. Um, so we originally outsourced our HR through a P, uh, an ASO model. And what that means is administrative services outsourcing. And, and what that means is you have an outsourced HR function, outsourced payroll and outsourced benefits. Well, everyone loves outsourced payroll because who wants to own that? As well as benefits, who wants to own that in management and know exactly what it is? Um, but what they don't realize is there could be, if you had a really strong benefits provider, a lot of times they're sharing that same information and acting as an HR partner, whereas for a small business, you might not need to pay for that. So um, for example here, we were paying for this ASO model. What we found was the handbook they provided, we had tons of work to do on our own to, to get that done. Um, we also um, really never felt supported by them, right? So they had one person that maybe supported 75 clients. Well. We could call and ask a question, but a lot of times they didn't know our business and we weren't able to um, get the value out of that relationship for what we paid for. And again, this goes back to using your network, right? I happened to be at a graduation party. I was talking to somebody there. She's like, oh, I think I could save you some money on that. And lo and behold, we were able to reduce our costs significantly, um, you know, thousands of dollars by switching our payroll provider and using an outsourced benefits partner. And ours happens to be Gallagher. And we're gonna have actually Sharon Bronia who helps us on this, join us on our webinar. She is wonderful. And what we found was they could do sexual harassment training for us. Um, they have communications training that they can do. Um, during the pandemic, they put us on an HR call with all of their partners and we're talking about the laws and what was changing. And in addition to that, also talked about um, also talked about what, what they were going through, and which was so helpful during this time. So a lot of times through networking and a really strong partner, you're able to reduce your costs and get more value out of your vendors. So outsourced accounting and data analytics. So um, we, the wonderful piece of outsourcing accounting is that a lot of this is that small companies, mid-sized companies, maybe um, have had difficulty with their retaining their staff. That might be one issue. Or maybe they have never really gotten what they needed out of their accounting function and really want to understand, they want to run their business and they need information to run their business. And for whatever reason, based on the software they have, it could be that they don't want to make the investment, it could be they, they're in a rural area and it's difficult to get good staff in place. Um, they really struggle with getting what they need. Well, have you ever thought of this kind of goes back to like letting the experts do the work. So part of it could be you pay for only the services that you need. So that's a benefit. So maybe you have an AP clerk that, you know, really isn't utilized 40% of the time. Well, 
you know, or maybe you're cutting paper checks and you have three people signing off on those quick checks. Well, there's lots of ways to automate that. So there's software tools out there that are available that maybe your staff doesn't even have time to think about leveraging those that can be leveraged to reduce your overall costs, um, increase your, your visibility to your data, and also um, pay for only what you need. So one outsourced accounting can be a great solution for clients. Um, first thing is you probably would have access to a part-time CPA that you might never be able to afford. Um, secondly, um, using a really good software that is also expensive, but it's reduced from an outsourced accounting perspective that you can actually have real-time data analytics and real-time financial reporting. Um, the thought process is really like, really focus on what you want to do and outsource the other piece of the rest. Now, we recently had outsourced our accounting um, to the Montague Group as well. And again, we got big. We became a NetSuite uh, provider, which we'll talk about later in the, in the presentation. So we wanted to really understand what our clients were going through. And we insourced our accounting so that we could be the experts for our clients and do exactly what our clients want to do. Um, but it's also something good to inquire about because the reason being is you may have a more efficient, more effective, cost-effective way to get this done where you don't have to own it and you can leverage your staff to really do what they were meant to do. There's lots of times there's small not-for-profits and they have the person that's doing operations doing the accounting and it's just not a great, it's number one, it's not what they're trained to do, but also it takes away from what the meaning of the business is. So there's lots of options here. We'll be having a real presentation focus on the details of it, but it's something to think about and it might not have to be all of your accounting, it might be part of your accounting. So there's lots of options and software choices available. Um, it's very important to talk to people that to understand if you're really utilizing the best way for your business. Cloud-based software. So this goes back to NetSuite. So we are, we've recently become a, a NetSuite reseller, but there's QuickBooks in the cloud. There's SAP B1 in the cloud. There's lots of cloud-based solutions out there. And if utilized effectively, you can understand exactly what's going on in your business. And the way these new softwares are leveraged, a lot of times the cost is very similar to that of like a QuickBook or a tier two software where you don't have to own the software and make the changes, you, it's all built in for you. So um, I'll give you just an example of NetSuite. And one of the reasons why we decided to partner with them is they have a pre-configured implementation depending on your industry with best practices for over 20,000 clients, which is so powerful to know. Because a lot of times you'll be implementing a software and you're like, what do I do? Like, I think I need this for my business, but is this the right thing to do? And everyone should be asking if it's the right thing to do. So this is a really good understanding of a way to look at it. And you also have the ability, like for example, when I look into our NetSuite, I know what our top 10 items are for sale the minute I logged in. That's on my screen. So it also allows you to invest in what is useful to invest in. Um, and you'll know where you're getting up, where you're losing money and where you're making money. And what this will do is really help you to make better business decisions. So software can do so many things. Um, it seems overwhelming, but there are lots of options. And if you're with a good implementation partner, you can uh, really effectively help you manage your business. So upcoming webinars that we've got going on here. Um, making faster, smarter decisions using a cloud ERP solution. So this will be really, this is about the benefits of NetSuite. Um, this is about the benefits of um, having a good software in place that is not only cost effective, but will also allow you to get data out. So good example, when we were in the middle of this, we were able to quickly understand where our costs lie, what costs they were and how to reduce them or where we should be investing, right? So this is a really good software tool can be very helpful to you. Um, and having it be in the cloud, anyone can manage it or work on it. The other thing, the other one coming up on Tuesday, the 16th is really exploring the benefits of outsourced administrative services. So it could be HR, it could be IT, it could be accounting. Um, these are all things that would be available. And we have two guest speakers on it. Lindsay Lucas from Art Entree will be on there. Um, she's really been instrumental with us in our IT solutions, as well as Sharon Bronia from Gallagher. Um, which we've had her on an earlier webinar too, and she's done just a wonderful job um, with providing value to us really on a weekly basis. So um, tune into those if you're available, you won't be disappointed. And um, at this point, I'm available for questions if anyone has any.
And again, if you have any questions, put them in the chat box. We can, um, we can be available to answer. Okay, so it looks like we don't have any questions. Please feel free to email me directly or Caitlin if you have any questions about today's webinar or would like to talk further. We're available and hopefully you will attend our next two sessions in the webinar series.